Hey, I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue, and today we are cooking a tomahawk in the wood-fired pizza oven. So you don't need a wood-fired pizza oven to follow along with today's cook, but I have been blown away with recent steaks, whether I've done them on my solo stove, right over a live fire, just using small little wood chunks to maintain a cooking temperature before bringing the heat up for that inferno mode sear. Same thing on my offset, something that I didn't think would traditionally be good at um, a low and slow and then a sear cook. I was able to reverse sear a steak on my offset and then sear it directly in the coal bed and still get a great sear. And so what all these steaks have in common is just that live fire, wood fire flavor. And this is really easy to overdo if you're smoking in a Kamado. In fact, I often, with steak, I don't like to add any smoking wood because if we're running just glowing embers, you don't tend to get that same clean smoke. So what I would often do is add some wood chips or pellets in my bottom ash drawer as that is enough to sort of just run up to the heat and impart that wonderful wood-fired flavor. Or you can actually cook with wood chunks directly. I've done an entire brisket running my Kamado Joe like an offset by setting up uh, my heat deflectors and a cooking grate above that and just warming splits or little wood chunks and moving them over. So you can absolutely pull this off in a variety of grills. So today isn't so much about the grill that you have, it's about the wood flavored experience and seeing if we can impart that flavor or translate that to a variety of different tools. And today I'm gonna to be doing this on my brand new La Pizziava Piccolo Pizza Oven. So we're gonna keep things really simple today, but as you can tell, since the fire's already going, you need to catch up to me. So let me take you back about an hour ago when we start building our fire, and I'll walk you through everything from prepping, seasoning, making our chimichurri, and my favorite sear sauce. And you can use this sear sauce, whether you're cooking directly over the coals, on your soapstone, or on cast iron, like I'm gonna be searing today. I'll rejoin you when you're all caught up, and we'll get ready for our taste test. So to help with a coal bed, I'm gonna place a couple pieces of fogo in the back corner here. Then we'll take the pieces of kindling that we broke down, just build a little bit of a teepee over that charcoal. Then our grow blazer sous vide gun, and fire that up. Install our door. Vents all the way open, let that warm up. Okay, so we're cruising along at 400 degrees with the door on. Let's open that up. Let's take a look at our surface temperatures here. So pretty similar to the ambient temp, we're at 365. So I want to cook at a little bit lower temperature. And so I found, you know, with my offset or with the Joe, too much wood is too much heat. So I'm planning to use oak chunks and we'll go to a full size oak split and I'm hoping just like I've done with my solo stove before this will allow us to maintain a small but clean burning hot fire so let me get some high heat gloves move our coals all to the back drop in our wood chunk then to help with combustion I'm just going to like I would on my offset preheat the next split by putting it away from the fire but where it'll start to warm and help that uh, burst into flames immediately when we put it on the fire okay while our oven is coming up to temperature we can pull our steak out of the refrigerator, let that start to shake off some of the cool. And as you can tell from the color of this steak, it looks dry aged. This is actually just an extended dry brine. Uh, I love to dry brine my steaks. I normally do them just overnight. But as you can tell, this has had an extra day in the refrigerator. So you start to really get that dark, mahogany color on the outside, giving it something that looks as if it has been dry aged. But this is going from my normal 24 hours to 48 hours. So what we're gonna do for seasoning, this has obviously got its salt, so we don't need to add any more salt. I've got some garlic powder, some onion powder. I'm gonna use a hot sauce as a binder just to help that adhere. And I'm gonna save the pepper to the end since I love the aroma and the oil to sort of the textures when they release from fresh cracked black pepper, but I think they're gonna be susceptible to burning. So I'm gonna add those at the end of our cook. So let's get a bit of a binder on. And now some garlic and onion powder. And then next, a meter probe. And so I'm just gonna go in this way. If we were to go this way, we run the risk of potentially coming near where the bone is and getting some false readings. So I like to go sort of opposite of where we would run into that bone and try and land here in the middle of the roast when we insert to the, the line here that meter suggests we go past. That looks good. Let's go check on our fire. So for cooking our steak, we have a couple options. You could throw some cast iron cookware 
uh, into our pizza oven, but with a tomahawk and the bone being a little bit longer, I don't want to get a funny angle when it comes time for searing. I measured and checked my soapstone. The soapstone for the Big Joe is too large for my piccolo uh, pizza oven. Uh, maybe something for the classic size Joe would work, but instead what I plan to use is what I picked up for my kettle Joe. So uh, I saw Fogo.com has a bunch of new gear. Earlier this year I added a slow and sear, drip and griddle, cast iron pan, as well as the basket for my kettle Joe to help get a little bit more utility, but this I measured will fit perfectly. So I'll be able to leave the cast iron in, start to soak up that heat and drop on the cooking grid to get a little bit of separation so we don't uh, sort of just cook or transfer too much heat energy through conduction, our food sitting on a hot surface while we're waiting for it to come up to temperature. Then when it's time to sear, we'll be able to remove this and uh, this steak will fit just fine. So let's transfer it on to our slow and sear uh, cast iron half spoon here and get this into our oven. All right, we've got nice fire at the moment and uh, this piece of wood is preheating, getting ready to go on, starting to change color so that'll combust nice and easy. Let's grab our door. And then I'm going to close our damper down to about halfway, just like it would on our Kamado Joe. The damper in partnership with the air intake is going to just help preserve some of that energy and not let a runaway fire go through a bunch more wood in the process as well. Okay, while our steak is cooking, it gives an opportunity to make up a quick little chimichurri. So I've really been liking this one lately. So we're going to mix in a little bit of cilantro along with our Italian parsley. So we're just going to break this down with a really fine chop. Okay, that looks good. Let's move that to the bowl. Okay, next let's break down our two small shallots. So next I have my garlic, some red chili flakes, as well as my dried oregano mixed together. I'll put that into the bowl. Red wine vinegar, two thirds cup olive oil, some smoked sea salt, this is Malden's, and then some fresh cracked black pepper. I've got this uh, pepper cannon set to sort of a medium fine setting on our burr mill. So let's fill that up, that looks about right. Mix that all in. That looks good. We'll give that salt some time to pull out some moisture. I've held back just a little bit of olive oil in case we want to add that, but I like to wait just until I see how much uh, moisture the salt pulls out to make sure our chimichurri is not too runny. See you in a couple minutes. Okay, meter says it's time to get our steak off, so I'm just gonna set this on here to rest. We can also pull out this uh, cooking grid. And now the fun part, build our fire for Inferno mode. So our steak is resting and our pizza oven is getting good and hot. I'm a little bit worried it may be too hot. So to help just make sure we get a great sear versus it sticking and burning, let's make up my favorite sear sauce. I'll bring it nice and close. It takes one minute or less to make, so let's do it. So I've already added just a little bit of red wine and vinegar and some garlic that I minced up. Next, you're gonna use some real mayo then some more smoked salt and some fresh cracked black pepper. Looks good. Let's mix that up. See how it is for consistency. Okay. That is looking right on the money. Let's get our meter probe out. It's done its job. And then I'm just going to brush this all over on all surfaces. It's going to give this a little bit of fat help. Uh, again, just give us a great sear, even though this is already looking really good from having that fire roll over the top the entire cook. All right, let's drop in our tomahawk. Oh, that's looking great. Let's get the other side. Lovely. This looks and smells amazing. I'm a touch worried that I've overdone it in the midst of doing a couple other things in the background, like prepping our chimichurri. So hopefully I've not completely uh, ruined this otherwise amazing looking steak. Let's come nice and close. We'll find out together. Okay. Moment of truth. Let's get this off of our tomahawk bone here. Okay. Let's cut into it. That 
a touch beyond what I would like, but that's still, I think, a perfect medium rare. Let's get this into some slices. Get a little bit of our chimichurri here. Dive in for our taste test. Cheers. Oh my goodness. Wow. That is so good with the chimichurri. There's just an explosion of flavors. I'm actually gonna go for a piece with nothing on it just so I can better make sense of the pizza oven and the cooking with wood for our taste test. Try another piece here. Mm. Mm. It's so good. It doesn't even need anything else. It's perfect. Wow. That is incredible. There's just something about cooking with wood. And you can do this in a variety of different grills. I've used my Kamado Joe like an offset based off of the experience of wood uh, being even better. Uh, and so you can run small little wood switches in the bottom. Just try and make sure that you have an open flame. I've cooked a steak like this on my solo stove. And while the temperature was much harder to control than the oven or the Joe, you can absolutely uh, pull it off if you're able to maintain that small little hot fire. I've even done steak on my offset, but there's just something magical about wood, no matter what grill. Uh, or style smoker that you're using. If you can get that clean burning fire, it just adds that something little extra. So if you've not tried it, even if it's a small little fire in your Joe or something like that, I definitely give this two thumbs up. But I'm not gonna wait much longer. I'm gonna finish this off. So without further ado, I'm James from Token Dad Barbecue signing off. Remember, don't be afraid to fire it up. Mm. I'm gonna be none left for the family. Mm hmm. Mm.